Hey, my name. <laughs> hey, my name's Kai, and <laughs> uh, my name's Kai, and we're gonna make bagels today. <laughs> Okay, I think I just got cinnamon sugar crunch in my hair. <laughs> Hi bakers, it's Kai. I'm the associate recipe editor at King Arthur Baking and today we are making cinnamon sugar crunch bagels. These beauties, they have a gorgeous cinnamon sugar crunchy topping and they are a sweet spin on our recipe of the year bagels. And if you are one of those people who is part of the cult following of Panera's cinnamon crunch bagel, you are going to love being able to make these at home for yourself. So like many good things, this recipe begins with a starter. And we are going to be using King Arthur bread flour today. And the reason why we're using bread flour is because good bagels are chewy. They have that bite to them that makes them bagel-y instead of just round bread. And that comes from a flour with a little bit more protein in it. So our bread flour has 12.7% protein content, which is just the right amount to give you that classic bagel chew. The starter that we're making today is a special kind of starter. It's called pat fermente, and it's really quite stiff. You'll see I have to knead it to bring it all together. And the flavors that you get from a stiff starter are really well-rounded, complex, and totally delicious, less tangy, which is what you might get if you use, say, a sourdough starter or something more liquidy. So into a mixing bowl, you're going to add your bread flour, your salt, and just a pinch of yeast. You don't need too much. And then you are gonna add your cool water. You don't want this to be too hot, otherwise it will ferment too quickly. And remember that time equals flavor. So if you're going to let it rest for a whole 14 hours, definitely use cool water. If you're going for the shorter amount of time, four hours, you might want to use water that's a little bit more warm just to kickstart that yeast. So use a spatula to combine the ingredients. Don't panic when it looks really stiff. Remember, that's this pat fermenté consistency. You're doing the right thing. You might even need to knead it a few times with your hands, and that is just fine. So our pat fermenté is mixed. I'm going to cover it and let it rest at room temperature overnight. It'll expand a little bit, become puffy, and develop all those delicious flavors that will then go into our bagels. This is our starter that has been resting overnight. You can see that it has become puffy. It has some bubbles on the top and it is ready to go. So our pat fermenté is ready to go. I'm going to add it to the mixing bowl first, then I'll add our water. It's important to add the water on top to help loosen the starter and the whole dough will become easier to mix. Then we'll add our vanilla extract. We'll add one tablespoon of light brown sugar, which adds sweetness to the dough and it has a little bit of molasses flavor to it. And our yeast, which will make the dough rise some salt, which is important for flavor and also fermentation. And our bread flour, which is that quality flour for chewiness, key for bagels. And then the star of the show, the Vietnamese cinnamon. So let's mix it up. It's time to talk about cinnamon sweet bits. These are little cinnamon morsels, almost like cinnamon chips, but they're more organic in shape. And the Panera bagel is studded with these little pockets of cinnamon on the interior. And we found the best way to recreate that is to use these. They are also really just kind of good for snacking. We could put them on your oatmeal. You could put them in yogurt, sprinkle them over coffee maybe. I like to eat them with Cheerios. This is what's gonna give the bagel dough those little pockets of cinnamon flavor. So after the dough has been kneading for about six minutes, you're gonna add a quarter cup to the dough and let it finish mixing. And the reason why we don't add it right from the start is so that these little bits don't just fully break into pieces. You wanna keep some of those chunks. I like marshmallows and hot chocolate. Maybe I like cinnamon sweet bits and coffee. So the dough is fully incorporated. I will just shape it into a ball and then I'll cover it and let it rise at room temperature for about two to two and a half hours until it looks puffy and is doubled in size. Happy dough. This is so ready. Big bubble. The proofed bagel dough is now on a lightly floured surface and I'll divide it into six even portions, about 120 grams each if you wanna use the scale. I'll show you how to pre-shape the dough. 
You're going to use your hands to stretch each corner into the middle of the dough so that it makes a little bit of a purse almost. You're gonna pinch the sides together to seal so that you have a little dumpling-like dough. If any of the cinnamon sweet bits pop out, just tuck them back in. Once you have your six little pre-shaped dumplings, you're going to go back to the first one that you shaped and you're going to round it. At this point, you don't want any flour on your surface because you're actually trying to get a little bit of tension to shape the dough. So just clear your surface of any extra flour and you can even lightly spritz it with water if you're having trouble getting it to stick. Our bagels have rested for about 10 minutes. That is just a brief rest to allow the gluten to relax so that we can now do the final shaping. So the method that we like to use for shaping bagels is where you poke a hole in the center using your thumbs and then stretch it with your fingers. This is a common technique for home bakers because it ensures that the dough stays together and doesn't unravel because the other technique for shaping bagels is where you roll it into a log and then twist the ends together. You can sometimes end up with bagel sticks if you don't make that seal. So this is a really fail-proof method. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. Once you have a slight hole, I like to switch to my pointer fingers and kind of rotate while I'm stretching outwards. You want to make the center of the bagel about two to three inches in diameter, and that's going to feel way bigger than you want in your final bagel. And that's okay, because these bagels are going to rest for about 30 minutes and then get boiled. And in that time, the hole will close. So you want a way bigger hole at this point in the process than you do in your final bagel. You might be wondering, when are we gonna make the cinnamon sugar crunch topping? That's why everyone loves these bagels. It's all about the topping. We're gonna do that next while these shaped bagels do their final rise for about 30 minutes. Then it's cinnamon sugar crunch time. Now we're going to make our cinnamon topping and prepare our water bath for the bagels. So to make the topping, you need a little bit of light brown sugar, which adds that molasses-y flavor. We have regular granulated sugar, which adds some sweetness. We have sparkling sugar, which adds a really nice crunch. That's the crunch in the cinnamon sugar crunch bagels. And it has a larger grain size, so you get that texture. There is some flour, which helps bind it all together. We have melted butter, delicious creamy butter, and vanilla extract, and then some cinnamon. Cinnamon flavored bagel after all. So I'm going to combine all of the dry ingredients, whisk them up, and then you're just going to mix this all up until you get a crumbly texture. Think like streusel that you would see on the top of a coffee cake. You can get in there with your hands if you want. You just want to mix it until combined. Now it's time to boil and bake. I can't say that straight face without saying wake and bake. <laughs> Don't wake and bake, boil and bake. Okay. Now it's time to boil and bake our bagels. They have been rising for about 30 minutes, so they look a little bit puffy. They don't look deflated. If your bagels look flat at this point, that means that you've overproofed them. You can't really go backwards at that point. Just note for next time that you can do a shorter rest. We have our water bath over here. It has eight cups of water and some honey, and the honey gives a little bit of additional sweetness to the crust of the bagels but it also makes them shiny and gives them a really nice golden brown color. All right, I think our water bath is ready. We've got some big bubbles. It doesn't need to be at a rolling boil that might toss your bagels around a little bit, but it's smelling great. I'm enjoying my honey scented facial. And now we're ready to drop our bagels in. So ever so gently, just kind of lift them up. And I like to put them face side down in first, and that way they're just ready to go when you flip them back. And you don't want to crowd them in the pot because they need space to move around a little bit and stay round. So two or three at a time, depending on the size of your pot. So we just need about 60 seconds on this side and then I'll flip them. In the meantime, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of semolina onto my baking sheet, which will prevent the bagels from sticking. You can skip this step or you could use cornmeal or even a little bit of flour. You can also just lightly grease your parchment. The bagels are looking fluffy. It's been about a minute, so I will turn them over. You can use a slotted spoon for this step, but I love using our dough whisk 
just gives it a, another purpose and it's just about the right size. And then they get 60 more seconds before we'll transfer them to the baking sheet. So take your bagels out. Be careful, you might need to use an oven mitt at this point. You are working with boiling water. And if it starts to get at a rapid boil, just turn it down. Remember, you only need a little bit of a simmer. And then do the same thing with the other three bagels. So here's a quick troubleshooting tip if your bagels don't come out perfectly first time. If they deflate during the boiling step or become really wrinkly, that means that you probably overproofed them. So next time, shorten the amount of time between when you shape them and when you boil them. Now it's time to add the topping. <laughs> We're going to brush the boiled bagels with a little bit of an egg wash and that will help our topping stick because we don't want any of that deliciousness falling off. All right, let's bake these. Our bagels are baked. They are looking amazing. They've got some nice golden brown color on the sides and the top is golden brown as well. Some of the cinnamon sweet bits may fall off the top slightly and burn a little bit. That's okay, it's to be expected. That's why we put parchment down so that it's easy to clean up. But the bagels themselves, they won't burn. They will burn if you bake them. <laughs> you gotta cut that out. <laughs> These bagels look just like the bagels you'd get at Panera and maybe even a little better. Uh, they've got this blistered crust down here and the topping is like a crown of cinnamon streusel. So if you love streusel, you're going to love these bagels. It's kind of like a cinnamon bun meets a coffee cake meets a bagel. I mean, who wouldn't love that? They've got this gorgeous color. Can't wait to slice into it and toast it up and put some butter on top. All right, let's slice these puppies up and check out the crumb. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you make our cinnamon sugar crunch bagels. They are so delicious. And whether you've had the Panera version or you've never had it, you are totally gonna love this. If you like streusel, if you like cinnamon buns, if you like bagels, you've gotta make this. It uses our base dough from our recipe of the year. And it's really a recipe that we, we love at King Arthur. So make it, bake it, share it with us, and make sure that you like and subscribe. And thanks so much for watching. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.